This week's episode is sponsored by White's Beaconsfield. White's Beaconsfield is the number one company in the UK to brighten up your smile at a very affordable price. Get your perfect smile today using code AGJAMESENGLISH at checkout for a 15% discount on all products. from White's Beckinsfield. I'm on day five out of seven and my teeth are looking white. So it doesn't contain peroxide, so it's very, very safe for you to use on your teeth. It doesn't cause any sensitivity and I've literally got the most sensitive teeth. The most affordable product, works like a dream. Look how white, with no filter, no sensitivity, and it is just one of the best that I've ever used. Right, that's three days, it's crazy. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. So I created the character Dapper Laughs to sort of protect myself from how real I was going to be. I should have felt like I was bigger than it, but I got to a point where I couldn't. I was so insecure that I started targeting the journalists. So the people that were writing it, I'd at them to millions of my followers. Why are you doing this? Why are you saying that? The next day, ITV2 cancelled me. So I worked 10 years towards getting a TV show, cancelled me. My brand deals, Beyond Borg, everything, worth hundreds of thousands of pounds, cancelled me. My tour, I just got an advance of 150,000 pounds. I had to pay back. I got sued from a load of venues that I couldn't turn up to because they were getting protested. Then my fucking manager dropped me. Then a week later, my dad had a stroke and died. And I was off me tits, just turned the TV on to watch the TV and they got 200 people. And this person's going, so Dapper laughs, offensive or funny? And the comedian was meant to be <laughs> defending me. The comedian's like, well, he ain't funny, but he's not offensive. And then, the, the, then they were going through all my jokes and everything. I can remember sitting there going, what the fuck? And then looking out the window as well. And there was journalists outside and I was like, I was only having a fucking laugh. I put it in that part of my jumper and I opened the door and Anne was like, oh, it's the toilet breed. <laughs> so I watched that clip back like no one knows. I had a Johnny full of spunk right there. <laughs> but that's why I talk about suicide and, and mental health because when you mix bad times with a lot of drugs, yeah. you don't take a lot to top yourself, I don't think. Yeah. But that video was probably the most viral video that I've ever done. And do you know what that tells me? There's a lot of people out there that do exactly yeah. the same fucking thing. Boom, we're on. <laughs> Today's guest, we've got Dapper Laughs. How are we, brother? How you doing, mate? All yeah, right? really good, mate. Watched your stuff for years. think you're Thank phenomenal. You. Thanks, man. I think you were the man who set the bar for social media kind of things. Your videos were viewed, what, billions of times? Yeah, Hundreds yeah, of millions man, of times. Definitely one of the first people. I've, I've been, I, I keep seeing your podcast when you're asking for guests and they kept tagging me in it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, who is this guy? Why am I getting tagged? Getting so many tags. So I'm thinking this podcast must be popping. Mm -hmm. So then I had a look and had a watch and um, and yeah, and, and then now I'm here. Yeah, so here we are. Fucking brilliant. But yeah, definitely, um, I can remember when I first started making videos, it was Vine and when I hit a million followers on Facebook, I think the only other page on Facebook with a million followers was the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. that's so it was, that's how early it was. Yeah. There wasn't really influencers mm -hmm. back then. Yeah. Congratulations, all your success through Thank you. comedy, all your videos, documentaries. Mm. You're a successful guy, man. You're flying. So fair play. Yeah. It takes a lot of, of now, balls. Now. Yeah, no, now. Man, I know you've had your roller coaster on your yeah, emotions, but yeah. fuck it. We all yeah. go through that shit. Do you shit. know what? I think that I think that if you can if you can have some serious make some serious mistakes or have some serious downfalls and lose 
lose traction and lose money and lose stuff and you get a second chance you certainly appreciate it a lot more and you tread a little bit carefully cautious more you know yeah, what I mean? yeah yeah but fuck it as well so, because the way it makes a good story yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. and I'll tell you something if someone, ever, if someone whenever anyone says what do you do yeah. normally I'm like if I could label my profession it's like fuck shit up I'm yeah. good at fucking stuff up but that's how you started that is what yeah. you've done yeah. was pushing the boundaries yeah. that's what people laugh because it is entertainment mm. it is comedy yeah. no matter what way you look at yeah. it if you want to be a wee virgin and sit there and yeah. point flaws and everybody so be it yeah, but I mean, you can't please everybody it's very easy it's very easy for like when I got when I first got on TV and I got my TV show they the, the press will go back through your tweets from fucking since Twitter began mm. do you know what I mean so it's tweets from two years ago or videos from years and years ago and stuff like that and one thing that really frustrated me is bang I'm on TV I'm signed to ITV2 I'm selling out tours and then these old tweets and stuff but what people fail to forget is that in order to become viral in the first place you have to have something about ya and for me it was controversy mm -hmm. so I purposely said things that would piss people up because, piss people off because you'd either write on it and say I'm a dick or you'd write on it and say it was funny but either mm -hmm. way if you're writing on it it's going viral yeah you're building a platform you're building a platform yeah. so my Somewhere, uh, somewhere, somewhere amongst all this um, cancel culture and and people being offended, somewhere along along this line, people have forgotten that comedians are supposed to say things that are, are offensive. We're supposed to, you know, it's comedy. I'm not a politician. I'm not. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not a good role model. I don't want to be a fucking role model. <laughs> I'm not a role model. I'm a comedian. Yeah. I'm took. I can remember one of the first videos that ever went viral for me and, and ended up in the newspaper and on I, like on Channel 4 News and this was before I had a TV show it was on Channel 4 News and I just was walking down the street and it was it, what they don't understand is these are actresses that I use so you know it's a sketch but because I'm, I'm, Dapper Last was always someone that was meant to push the boundaries it's like you know taking a piss out of lag culture so I'd have a woman it was a sketch but because it's on the phone it looks like it's real and I was just like can I smell your fanny <laughs> and she's like no you can't smell my fanny so I'm yeah. like well it must be your fucking feet then <laughs> it's done right yeah. it's just wordplay yeah, yeah. so my, when I write jokes it's wordplay so you begin a joke by saying it's going to be this can I smell your fanny and everyone's like oh, you can't say that well it must be your feet then mm -hmm. so then the shock but no to, to it's any, changed days now yeah to anyone else out there yeah. especially feminist journalists mm -hmm. that are, have an agenda I'm just Hitler yeah but it's actors actresses it's yeah. just entertainment if you watch a, a film and there's murders on it yeah. it doesn't mean every murder that gets done now is because of a certain film it depends what's trending do you know what I mean it of depends, course it depends what uh, what's trending in offence you know at the moment people are offended by people not wanting to wear masks or people are offended by people saying there's conspiracy theories yeah. about this you know that offends people we live in a very softened generation though yeah. and the good thing about that is it's so easy to become successful now because the majority of people are so weak yeah. they just want to fight and argue yeah. about stupid shit but not really work on themselves mm. but before we touch on everything yeah. about your life I always go back to the start with my guest brother yeah. Where you grew up and how it all began? So, uh, fuck, I, don't, I can't. I think I've been on the smash for so long. I can't even remember <laughs> that far back. I grew up. Um, I, I was born in Kingston. I grew up. Uh, I come from like a broken home. My mum and dad broke up, so I'd spend some time with my mum, some time with my dad, and um, yeah, I grew up around Surrey, and a massive Irish family. So my my dad had fourteen brothers and sisters. Do you know what I mean? My, my, like my grandma on that side didn't have a TV and I don't believe in contraception. So they was just shag she was yes. just shagging and just having babies. Yeah. So there's like 14 brothers and sisters. So I guess where the entertainment started from was every Christmas, all my 14 uncles and aunties would bring all of the cousins together to collect their, like on Christmas Eve. So there'd be thousands and thousands of presents and we'd all have to perform something, sing, dance. It's like an Irish thing, like sing, dance or whatever. Mm. And I used to play the saxophone. And then when I got a bit older, I'd dance. And then when I was about seven, I'd done a load of Bernard Manning jokes. My dad taught me, proper naughty ones. Mm -hmm. And my aunties and uncles, you know, like my, my mother-in-law or da 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 mm -hmm. and all this shit. And uh, the family died. And I think that was the first taste of like, right, yeah, comedy. I love it, like telling jokes. And then I'd do like Butlin's talent contest. And then when I got old enough, you know, my mum moved away when I was 15. So I actually moved out when I was 15. And I um, 
I survived by doing not such great things, but I wanted to be a comedian. So I'd do the comedy clubs. When I started doing the comedy clubs when I was like 16, but I was terrible. I had no idea how to do comedy. And then I've become an estate agent, got bored of that. Well, by the time I was 18, I, I flew away to Cyprus and I was working in the, oh God, it's so cringy. I was working in the holiday park, like the, the hotels doing bingo. So I was just calling the bingo once a week. And then I started doing like, who wants to be a millionaire and presenting, but then adding comedy to it. And six months later, I had a full comedy show that I was doing in this hotel when I was like 18. And somebody saw me from a cruise ship company and poached me on my last like a week of working there. Like it's fate, poached me. And then I worked on a cruise ship for four years, traveling all around the world. And by the time I got off the cruise ship, I was a fully fledged professional comedian. So that's where the comedy started then that's from a the very young age. Yeah. How was your schooling and stuff? Horrific for me. I'm dyslexic, so uh, I can I I I just wanted to fuck about. Yeah. And uh, I got expelled from one school, so completely thrown out of one school, mm -hmm. and had to join another school. I actually, it was so they would. I don't think they'd ever do this now, but I got expelled from one school, and the new school that had me, I think it was at the end of year nine. When I joined it, they made me wear my old school uniform for a week in the new school because mm -hmm. I, I used to get into quite a lot of fights and stuff and just fuck about and the new headmaster was like right if you can wear your old school uniform in this school for a week and keep yourself out of trouble you can stay and uh i can remember walking around in my old school uniform in that school and um and yeah i had a few fight like i had a few like i used to get knocked about a bit but outside of school and um survived that week and ended up staying there but didn't really do very well for my GCSEs. Just wanted to get into performing arts school. Mm -hmm. So it's crazy walk about your uniform for a week and stay out of trouble. But then you yeah. feel like a victim. Then that people yeah. are but looking at, at you. And but I was if it, obviously they had got my my report from my last yeah. school. I was a proper Jack the Lad, like a proper arsehole, and they yeah. didn't want me. This new school. I can remember my mum. My mum said to me, and this is the honest truth. If my mum watches all my stuff, so she'll probably watch this. My mum stopped coming to parents' evenings when I was like eight. She just said, fuck that. <laughs> Too bad. Too bad, yeah. yeah. I was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And I can remember my mum saying, you know, this is why they're doing this because they don't want you at this new school. Mm. So, you know, this is the week, your probational period. And I had some fights with some of the boys actually that I'm friends with now from that school. People yeah. taking the piss out of me and, mm -hmm. and then me going and saying, all right, not in school, after school. Um, and, and yeah, I managed to get some GCSEs, enough to get me into performing arts school singing, dancing and acting. And that's, that was me. That was it then. So was that your escape then? Yeah. From kind of fighting and feeling not good yeah. enough? Yeah, I was never very good at fighting, but I was really, really, really confident. Like if some, like, <laughs> I still get beaten up now to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I, I still do get beaten up now. Yeah. Like I can't, um, well, quite uh, recently, notoriously, I, I had a, a uh, MMA fight with Harvey. I don't know if you saw that. Seen it, bro? Yeah. Yeah. So and I, your boxing one as well. You're thank you. Doing. Yeah, well yeah. done, man. I like I like to fight. I mm -hmm. like like I like to have a, a scrap, but I'm mm -hmm. not really very good at it. Mm -hmm. But um, I've grown up being really mouthy, like because I was very small, and um, my my dad, God rest his soul, always used to say to me like, if if someone's starting on you, you know, if there's a few people starting on you and you can fucking mug them off and make their mates laugh before they give you a slap. I can remember my dad saying this to me. Every time that guy says to his mates, oh, do you remember when I beat up Dapper? His mates were going, but do you remember what he said? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right? yeah. So I'm like that. Like, I'll give you an example. I had an argument with my missus uh, at Christmas and uh, uh, she threw me out of the house. So it was like fucking Christmas Eve and I went to the pub and I was fucking smashed and I was angry. And some lads come in and I'll put this on my story. I had a massive black eye, I got sparked out. But some lads come in and one of them was like, I just had my boxing fight. So one of the lads was like, oh, I heard him behind me, it was dapper, he's a wanker. Fucking, he thinks he's hard, he's doing boxing. So I nice on like, and he come over to me and he was like, 
oh yeah, I hear you do a bit of boxing, mate. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, I'm thinking of getting my son into boxing. Can you recommend a gym for him? And I was like, yeah, Jimmy Savile, you can. <laughs> Sparked me out. Yeah. Sparked me out cold. But when I woke up, he was like still fucking raring to go. Mm -hmm. But his mates were going, leave him, he done ya. Mm -hmm. Saying that I done him, yeah. even though I was sparked. Mm -hmm. So that's always been my mentality. Do you know what I mean? I'm a little bit too mouthy. Getting light, being funny and mm. stirring shit up and it gets yeah. you acceptance where you feel Yeah, I'm definitely, light. I think if you, if you decide to be a comedian, the first thing is for sure is that you are definitely mm -hmm. severely insecure. And, and if you mix that with social media, as you know, with what you do, it's like, you know, last week I'd done a video about two men talking over the fence. I don't know if you saw it about... Not seen that. No, it was two men talking about the lockdown rules. And this, this video went fucking mental, like 30 million views. You know, my social media, I'm getting thousands of new followers and that. And that day it was great. For the next day I'm like, what's next? Yeah. Am I still relevant? Am I still mm -hmm. funny? So it is a constant battle on social media. But you're still here and social media is a numbers game. This yeah. becomes an addiction. So I question myself... Why am I doing this as well? I love what I do. I love hearing people's stories mm. because you tend to see a lot of us have got vulnerabilities and insecurities mm. and you tend, no matter how successful you become, mm. we're still all struggle. We're still all battling. Oh, like, mate. You've had videos at 30, 40, 50 million. Yeah. Unbelievable that people worldwide have watched your yeah, content, yeah. but then that, then that becomes a drug. But oh, what it course. needs to be is yeah. to find balance and understand, wait a minute, yeah. that's actually an illusion. I'm looking at a screen, yeah. looking for acceptance from a screen. It doesn't yeah. really mean fuck all. When you yeah. can, when you bring break it all down, yeah. yes, it brings food to the table. It gives you a wee bit of importance where you feel mm. self-seeking. I'm going to do a good video, but then your brain doesn't shut down because yeah, you're constantly next? thinking, how can I get more attention? Yeah. How can oh, yeah, I get yeah. more likes? Yeah. If you don't get certain likes on something, you feel as if your career's flopping or you're not good enough anymore yeah. and all the negative shit can then slip in. It's, it is yeah, a slippery it's slope. It's to find balance. And I did see your fight with the cage fighting and that gets slated, that show. There's it the Fame MMA or yeah. something or... It, it, anybody gets into a ring yeah. takes balls. Yeah, takes fucking balls. Well, I tell you, I tell you why. I tell you why. I, and a lot of my mates are like, "Stop trying to fight." Like I won my boxing match, but I mean, yeah. I only just won my boxing match. Mm -hmm. And when I decided to do MMA, a lot of my close friends said to me, "Like, what are you doing, man? Like, you could get fucking hurt." Like, and I tell you what, it. I tell you what it was for me that come at just the right time. I've been suffering really bad with. Um, I never believed in anxiety actually before, but I've been suffering. I was suffering really bad with anxiety, and also I just just started doing counselling because I've been like really, really going through really weird mood swings. So one day being really creative and out there and doing stuff, and the next day just not wanting to get out of bed. Do you know what I mean? And then I started getting into this whole conversation of mental health and da 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 da, -da and all this, and I started doing counselling and talking about when I lost my career and, and when my father died and then over lockdown, you know, my, my grandma died, then my missus grandma died Sorry to hear that. and then, thank you. And then her dad died and it's like, it's just loss, 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 mm -hmm. stop, 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 stop. It's like, I felt like I'm just trying to be happy for a little bit and then fucking there's, there's something else, something else. And then you get to the point where you, I felt like I was getting to the point where I was like, I've got two kids, so I've got to be happy, but I can't be fucked to be happy. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then the fight come up and I thought to myself, well, I'm drinking too much, I'm doing drugs, uh, I'm partying, I'm fat. And um, ultimately I feel like, regardless of how much money I've got in my house and how successful my numbers look online, I felt like kind of useless and lethargic. And I think that as a human race, when we get to the point where we're not chasing a dream or, we're ch or, or, or like you're working on this, if you're not working or something. No goals. If you have no goals and you're just sitting there, that's when I feel like the depression set in. And I said to my agent, nah, man, I'm not fucking fighting. No way in the cage. And I went away from it and I thought, that's exactly why you should do it because you ain't got the bottle to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I fucking said yes, like on the spur of the moment. Yes, I'll do it. Send me the contract quick. Sign the contract. Like didn't even fucking read the contract. Signed it. And next thing is, I got to do it. And then the training started. And then after about a week of the training, I thought, fuck, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. But then a week turned into a month, and I felt like a fighter. Mm -hmm. I was losing weight. I felt like a fighter. Uh, my anxiety was gone because I had purpose, and. And although I didn't win, 
I didn't think I was going to get in there. Do you know what I mean? Doesn't so, matter, man. The yeah. fact that you trained, the fact that you got in the ring, yeah. battling depression, maybe yeah. suicidal, drink, yeah. drugs. Yeah. The fact that you've took mm. the reins of your life and done. Wait a minute, I'm scared of yeah. this. That's exactly why you should yeah, fucking man. face it. The training, the endorphins, the yeah. serotonin, yeah. all the feel good factor that fights depression, anxiety, yeah. and pushing yourself to the limits. Right. Now you push yourself to the limits on your videos. So I know do it mm. internally, mentally. Yeah. I'm scared, but you know what? I'm going to go for it. And you done it, man. So I take my hat off to you Thank because. You. I don't care who you are anybody that gets in a ring no matter if it's sparring mm. MMA that takes bottle mm. because I've seen people it's good on the pads and punch bags as soon as they get in the ring their ass collapses no, yeah. it's a totally different all mental strategy all I wanted to find out is if I'd go push forward and fight because mm -hmm. I wasn't embarrassed about getting chucked out or knocked out because that yeah. shit happens to me weekly <laughs> <laughs> Christmas especially <laughs> I mean, that happens to me at Weatherspoons yeah. I'm cool yeah. but it was what I was worried about is going like that when the bell went or yeah. moving back and I thought now I'm a fucking geezer but mm -hmm. am I a geezer and what I learned from it is when you go through some horrific shit in your life like losing a parent lo losing all your money losing your career whatever I think is horrific to me I know there's loads of people out there that are going through worse or even less mm -hmm. but to them it's horrific right and what I realised is if something has horif horrific or whatever level you put it has affected you mentally and maybe you've done too much drugs, like I might have done in the past, you know, to, to sort yourself out or just because of culture, whatever. If you find yourself with down days, you can't wake up and just think, I hope today's better. You can't. You yeah. have, to, I, now I know that unless I wake up in the morning and I instantly go for a run before I do anything else, I run before my kids get up. So I try and get three kilometers in the bag, sweat. I instantly think, I've done something good. Mm -hmm. It calms me down. I'm ready for my kids and then the rest of the day seems all right. So yeah. for me, it's fitness. Million percent. You can handle mm. your problems better because if you've got problems, if you think you're losing your career, if you think mm. your relationship's breaking down or you don't like your job, if you're going in a pub and boozing, mm. taking That's gear, worse, worse. your problems ain't going to disappear. They're still going to be there. Now, I'm going through a transition where my life feels great, but I still have problems every mm. day. The reason I'm not drinking and taking gear is because I can handle these problems yeah, yeah. better. I can handle yeah. them face on. I don't go mm. hiding because if you're hiding behind it, they're still going to be there. Plus, more creep into play. Yeah. So, running every morning, fitness is key. Yeah. A million percent for your mindset. Now, you're mm. looking a lot fresher, you're looking yeah, a lot yeah, happier. Good. But the good thing is, you start getting better ideas. You yeah, start of changing it. Your life don't ain't get, fucking yeah. over. Yeah, I mean, Do don't, get, I mean? don't get me wrong. I still have my mishaps. And sometimes of I still. Of course, you're human. Yeah, I still, I still sometimes think, you know. The weird thing is with me, I know how my mind works. If I'm successful and I make a yeah. lot of money, I think party. If I lose something and things are shit, I think party. Mm -hmm. You know, so I've. But one thing I'm very conscious of doing is I understand that it's very toxic for young people out there to look on Instagram, and I'm worried about it for my kids to look on Instagram and everyone is winning, everyone is doing well, everyone's making money. All the people you follow have got followers; they're all doing great. I think it's a toxic thing for people to look at too much of that positivity. I think it makes you look back at yourself and think, "Why am I that person?" Mm -hmm. So I'm very conscious of not being a role model. But I am very conscious of using my platform to show my ups and my downs. Yeah. So quite often I will say, you know, I'm reevaluating my relationship with cocaine. I'm reevaluating my relationship with drink. Do you know why? Because I'm treating my missus like shit or I've, I've got mood swings. So I'm, I can't be creative. So do you know what? I'm going to try and get off the booze and the gear and mm -hmm. da da da. You know, I like, I like to try and speak to my followers as. Uh, you know just real not not come offline when I'm on yeah. a come down and not come back when laughs. I'm good yeah, yeah 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 of course but at least you're identifying with yeah. it because you've made mistakes we're human beings I continue to make mistakes mm. but if you can learn from them yeah. that's what shows courage that's what shows strength that's mm. where you can really you've got better yourself yeah, yeah and that's where the growth is when you fuck up that's where a million percent when you've done your very first video mm. can you remember it what, what was it what, your Facebook followers then what were you thinking um I can I, I can remember that I was doing stand-up comedy because I'd just come off the cruise ships and I was on the cruise ships, I was doing family-friendly comedy. So on a cruise ship, you've got like a mum, a dad, a grandma, a granddad and children in mm -hmm. the audience. So, you know, like I'll give you an example. So I'll be like, so the jokes would be like, uh, I got pulled over by the police the other day, you know, the police officer come and put his head through the window. That cost me 130 quid. You know, it's like stupid jokes like that. You know, they said, get out and walk in the line. And and she said, You're staggering. I said, Well you're not bad looking yourself, you know. <laughs> like cheese. Yeah, the cheesy you know, shit. So you'd have yeah. to I'd have to write this cheese. Mm -hmm. Like 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 and uh, and majority of the way that I'd write that comedy was by finding one word that had two meanings. That's a great way of writing comedy. So like contacts, 
could be like contact lenses or contacts. Mm. So I'd think of one word that I'd, this is how you write like safe humor. So I, I can remember being on the cruise ship and thinking, oh, contacts, I've got contacts, contacts. And I put it into my set. So it'd be like the police officer said to me, you know, give us your driving license. So I give it, it said, it says here that you should be wearing glasses. I said, I've got contacts. He said, I don't care who you know, you're breaking the law. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, so yeah, dumb yeah. shit, yeah. right? So I come back from that to doing open mic comedy where it's like fucking geezers pissed up and fucking squaddies and that and or like stag dudes and mm. shit. And I come in and I'll be like, and they'll just be like, mate, fuck off. Like, so I, I come back into the lion's den. So I was like, no, I'm a geezer. Like, so, all right, so what you want me to be real? Like, talk about real stuff. So, all right, I can be real. So I created the character Dapper Laughs to sort of protect myself from how real I was going to be mm -hmm. because I didn't see, there's no middle ground with re realness in comedy. It's either we're talking about fucking shit you do when you're younger, you know, mm -hmm. like shagging fat birds to get your numbers up or the mm -hmm. first time you fingered someone or doing coke or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Getting a blowy off a hook and you can't get a boner. <laughs> Still do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm like, like if you want realness let's, let's go real and then and, and just at that time when I started doing that I started blowing up in the comedy clubs you mm -hmm. know so I started I went from paying people because that's what happens when you're in a comedy club you go and pay to play so you pay them five pounds and you do fucking mm -hmm. five minutes I went from that for killing it to to, to them saying, oh, on Friday night, we've got like a proper a show, we'll pay you. Mm. So then I started getting paid to come and I was like, the best thing I worked out I was good at was audience interaction. Like, if you shout something out, I'll fuck you up, man. Mm -hmm. So, and I was brutal for it. So sometimes I'd write 10 minutes of comedy, but I'd do 45 minutes of audience interaction mm -hmm. and the audience would be like, that's amazing. So I started making a name for myself and then Vine come out and Vine is six seconds. And a joke is normally written a beginning, a mid, like a beginning, yeah. you take them on a right journey, a middle, like you tickle them, and the end mm -hmm. is like something completely different. So Vine was perfect for me. So then I started doing the Vines as Dapper Laughs and they went fucking, I can remember I was working as an estate, well, I owned an estate agency. I'd, by this time I'd set up my own business and it was like 30,000 followers and I was like, fuck me, I'm famous, mate. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely famous now, 30,000 followers and like, 10,000 views on a video. I was like, wow. And then it took maybe the space of six months for that to turn into a million and hundreds of millions of views. It's phenomenal. Yeah, it was crazy at yeah. the time. How and did you deal with that then being? Well, the first thing I did was got myself out of that business and, and then I started doing personal appearances. That was the weird thing for me. They booked me in nightclubs all around mm -hmm. the country. I know you've been up to Glasgow a couple of times. Yeah, I have, yeah. yeah. And that, that's how I made all my money at the beginning mm -hmm. was they'd pay me two and a half grand to go to a nightclub for people to queue up and have pictures with me, you know? And I used to follow Joey Essex. So Joey Essex would have gone the night before mm -hmm. and then I'd be there. And um, I went from earning, what, fucking 1,100 pound a month, <clears throat> like 11, 1,200 pound a month working for myself to 10, 15 grand a week doing, per, doing per, personal appearances. Yeah. So I was still young, like mm -hmm. I was still- What age were you? Maybe 27, 26, yeah. 27. And I was fucking making some money. So I was fucking about. I wasn't saving, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And uh, I was so deluded with money that I can remember buying my manager a Cartier watch. <laughs> my manager. Yeah, is it still your manager? He fired me like two months after that, dropped me. Why? When, when the shit hit the fan. And I felt like saying, give me the fucking How what? long were you, is your manager for? About a year and a half, two years. Yeah, that's fuck all. Yeah, but mm -hmm. we had a lot of love for each other. And mm -hmm. he was a young kid that got he took a punt on me and um, I said to him, you know, if, you know, when I first joined the agency, mm -hmm. he was like, I'm going to make you a hundred thousand pounds this year. And I was like, if you make me a hundred thousand pounds in my car. career, <laughs> like just in my career, yeah. I'll buy you a fucking watch of your choice. Yeah. He said, I want a Cartier. And he made it to He made it for me in like four months. So I went and bought the Cartier watch, but by the end of the year, they'd fired me. Well, that's fair play, isn't it? Do you know yeah, what I mean? I, he, he helped you. you yeah, helped in my, in my yeah. anger, yeah. When, I, when I got, when I ended up on Newsnight mm -hmm. and that, in my anger, I wanted to mm -hmm. go back and get the watch back. But he was a young, <laughs> he was a young boy. Proper childish, fuck yeah, yeah, childish, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But he was a young boy, it weren't him. Mm -hmm. It was like commercially viable, the right thing for them to do to drop me. You know? I don't believe in that because you've got to stick to the people who you worked yeah. with, man. I, I think dropping people at a hat for mistakes that they've made 
I don't really agree with that, mm. but people have got to look after themselves, I guess. Well, yeah, it was affecting their other talent. Yeah. You know, the media were contacting the other t- the talent on, yeah. their, on their roster and, mm-hmm. and saying, why are you with this agency? They're representing yeah. them. So. so when you're hundreds of millions of views, doing yeah. what you've done, and then you see your career ended. I don't think it ended. I'm going to be honest with you, I thought you'd get through under the bus. I don't know yeah. why it was you. You made a joke about rape, but yeah. you've got guys like Jimmy Carr, Frankie Boyle, Roy Chubby Brown, who talk about mm. pedophiles, rapes, mm. all that shit. Why your joke got national headlines? Uh, Why did you feel as if you had to justify yourself constantly for being on stage, mm. doing a joke, it backfired? But why you? Did you have any grievances with anybody? Were they just yeah, trying, yeah? Was you fucked over or what? Yeah, I will tell you what, I've never really, I've never, I've never really spoken um, like frankly or honestly about this, just because I always kind of felt like that I did say something wrong and and that I should have apologised. But the more the more I speak to other comedians and the more the more my like hardcore loyal followers, you know, when I do, you know, like last year I sold out the Troxy like 2,000 2000 people after two years of not doing stand up after my dad died and and the way that this whole situation made me feel getting thrown off TV and that made me feel that I wasn't capable as a comedian because a lot of mainstream comedians like Jack Whitehall and fucking loads of them all signed an, an open letter some of them slagged me off online saying that I wasn't a comedian and it took me like two years to get the guts to come back and go back on stage. I'm a, I'm a fucking amazing stand-up comedian on stage, right? But I lost that. I didn't believe that. And then when I put the show on sale, it sold out really quickly and I'd done it. And I can remember coming off stage thinking to myself, I should never have apologised. I shouldn't have apologised because what actually happened was I was arguing with journalists which I never had no media training because I come up through social media, right? So when a journalist writes a bad story about you, you're just meant to ignore it. And if they write another one, another one, another one, and then their sister publication writes one, and then all of them start writing the same stories, clickbait, 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 you're meant to just ignore it. It doesn't matter if it goes on for a year and a half and it's affecting your mental health, right? Every morning I'd wake up, it was a new story. It was a new thing, pro-rape, fucking misogynistic, uh, da, 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 cancel gig, da, 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 he's still here, why is he here, blah, blah. And I got to the point where I thought, well, I'm not changing, no, no I'm not, what they're doing is they're changing people's perception of me. Mm. But you don't see fucking Tom Hardy responding to a new, like, News of the World ad, or, do you know what I mean, Daily yeah. Star article, do you know what mm. I mean? You don't see Ricky Gervais replying to a fucking Guardian article, do you know what mm. I mean? So I just should not, I should have felt like I was bigger than it, but I got to a point where I couldn't. I was so insecure that I started targeting the journalists. So the people that were writing it, I'd at them to millions of my followers. Why are you doing this? Why are you saying that? And then one of them was a woman. She wrote this article about me and I added her and I said, well, that's wrong. That's incorrect. Why are you saying that? Do you realise what you're doing to my mental health? You know, how do you guys feel if I woke up, if, if you woke up tomorrow after your article and I fucking killed myself? Now, after putting that online, they got a barrage of that journalist, female journalist, got a barrage of fucking hate from my my fans, right? Mm-hmm. Fuck you. And a lot of it was sexually orientated hate. Fuck you, you slag. So I just shot myself in the foot. So they decided then, they started doing it. They'd done a picture of her lying down in the fucking new, in, in, in the, in the, uh, journalist mm. newsroom and they printed off this is how fucking pathetic they are they printed off every single tweet on an A4 piece of paper and they laid her down and they, they they put all the pieces of paper out next to her took a picture and went this is what he's done and I was just like I can't fucking yeah. win here do you know what I mean you can cunt me off mm-hmm. right but I can't defend myself Yeah. so what do you, what do you want me to do just fucking top yeah. yourself you're fucking my career mm-hmm. and then an article came out uh, the Guardian Dapper last new TV shows and Almanac for Rape. And that was it for me. You know, my family's been, in, uh, been affected by sexual violence, seriously, mm-hmm. right? So when they actually said my TV show was teaching men how to rape, I personally got really upset about it. And my manager, I was backstage just before I was about to go on at the O2 to do a show and I walked out and that's why I fucked up. I walked out and I said, they said that my TV show is an Almanac for Rape. And I was angry. I was like, if I wanted to make a TV show teaching men how to rape, I wouldn't have written six episodes. I would have just said, go down the road, get some duct tape, tie a girl up and rape her. It would have been a one one minute episode. Yeah. And right? they jumped on that. And then a girl at the front went, but my friend Lucy loves you. Throwing a fucking bra. 
on the stage. She loves you. She's gagging for a rape. And I was like, what's that, Lucy? She's gagging for a rape. You can't say that. And then I carried on with my show. But then, bang, in a newspaper, they cut, they, they, they quote, get the quotes, and the video, the video of me on stage goes like this. Dapper laughs, promotes rape at gig, watch. And then it goes, go down the road, get some duct tape, and rape a girl. She's gagging for a rape. They edited like that, right? Within two days, 60,000 people had signed a petition because the press had made them honestly believe, honest now, think how mental this is. They made, the press made 60,000 people honestly believe that I believed you should be allowed to go out and rape people, right? That's how much they manipulate. So 60,000 people signed the petition. The next day, ITV2 canceled me. So I worked 10 years towards getting a TV show, canceled me. My brand deals, Beyond Borg, everything, worth hundreds of thousands of pounds, canceled me. My tour, I just got an advance of 150,000 pounds. I had to pay back. I got sued from a load of venues that I couldn't turn up to because they were getting protested. Then my fucking manager dropped me. Then a week later, my dad had a stroke and died. Fuck's sake, bro. And I was like... Is that that? <laughs> is that wicked? How much I thought to myself, how much money have I got in the bank? Yeah. I, 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 I had about a couple of hundred grand in the mm -hmm. bank. And I thought, well, well I'm going to spend that on, yeah. on, on traveling the world, doing coke, fucking birds and, and, and killing myself. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I wanted to kill myself at that point. I'm not yeah. going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. But my missus, who had polystific ovaries, that was told she would never have kids, just before we were about to bury my dad, come to me and said, I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. And you think that would have made me go, well, I've got to sort my head out. It didn't. I, I mm -hmm. broke up with her. I said, fuck this. I'm, I'm, I'm on my way out. Like, I gave life a good chance at being nice. But luckily, three weeks later, I managed to do enough shit and fuck enough stuff up. I pulled my head together and got back yeah. together, done the pregnancy with her, and then my daughter came, and that was the beginning of... Fair play, bro. Of, 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 yeah. of a new journey, a new chapter. But that's the beauty of life. Not about followers, not yeah. about getting sacked from jobs and losing money. The beauty of life has been there for your kids. Yeah, 100%. Fuck everybody else. Now, I've seen your interviews. I felt as if you were justifying yourself to everybody. And that just makes you look guilty yeah. as if you've done this does. mad yeah. things. Now, I've seen that woman. Is it Newsnight? Mm. To 7 million people. Fucking You hard. get grilled more. That woman done Prince Andrew interview. And you get grilled harder than the guy who's supposed to have been fucking nonsense kids. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I just felt as if... It looks as if you've been thrown under the bus from yeah. a higher power or somebody else yeah. that... Well, do you know what it is? Do you know what someone said to me before? And this is why I'm doing podcasts now, conspiracy theory podcasts, chatting bollocks. Have a look, yeah. We're <laughs> yeah, chat it. We'll believe it like yeah, in the description. Yeah, yeah. But this is why I'm doing this uh, conspiracy theory podcast now. Um, because someone said to me, like, you know, it's, you do know it's a class thing. And I was like, what do you mean? And they're like, if you're like a working class comedian, like you're working class, right? And you're talking about the sort of shit I was talking about, right? Mm -hmm. They're like the upper class, people that control things. They look at you and they're like, he's not being ironic. How, ca how can you be ironic? You know, like Jimmy Carr is what is, is like upper class. But when he says worse jokes than I've ever said about rape, mm -hmm. do you know why the upper class can laugh at it? Because he's clearly being ironic. He's not dumb. But when you're working class and you speak the way I speak and you come from a council estate and you do them jokes, they don't think you're being ironic. They think, fuck me, he believes that. That's mm -hmm. why he's doing it. So when you start growing in social media, the press, like I've got more followers than The Sun, The Daily Mail. I've got a bigger voice than them online. Mm -hmm. And I think that it got to the point where a lot of people are like- Did you become too big? It's, it's not about what I was doing. It's like, what about if I did have a political opinion after this? You can force a What if I did agenda. after? Yeah. I might be chatting shit now, mm -hmm. but what about after? What if he has a political opinion about something after? Yeah. And shit does go that deep, you yeah, know? Yeah, 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 definitely. You know? So do you become a threat then that you can manipulate a mass following? Yeah. You've got millions of people following yeah. you. And if I don't like something that's going on like look at this covid stuff that's mm -hmm. going on you know yeah what if you know what if a load of massive social media influencers yeah. start kicking up a fuss about wearing masks mm -hmm. or fa facial recognition system for fines and shit like that that's what they don't yeah. want mate people believe what they read so you could put a post out there exactly you could just, listen you, you i could have a thousand people turn out up out of here fucking turning cars mm -hmm. over if i if i'd done it correctly mm -hmm. in fact if Let's i said <laughs> If I said, if I went online now on my Snapchat and went, right, yeah. whoever comes down here gets a free bag of gear, right, and a <laughs> night out with me, but you've got to smash the old place up, mate. I'll feel this part. I reckon I can get about 20,000 people down here. That's mad.
Yeah, so, but again, you become a threat. Do you feel as if the more you speak about it, at the time, if you just left it, it wouldn't have been as big? Nah, nah, I was fucked. I was fucked. I'm, re- I'm reluctant to talk about it. I've been reluctant to talk about it now. Like, that's why I haven't done a lot of podcasts and stuff like that because yeah. I kind of want to forget what yeah. happened because mm-hmm. I'm trying to rebrand myself. I'm doing a lot. I'm, you know, I'm writing now. I'm filming pilots. I've got a film coming out. And so you get the ball rolling again. Yeah. The bigger and better got, you know, It must have been tough though on your dad to see. Mm. He must have been proud of you, man, to see the fame, the success, the money. To then he's fucking dying days going through all that shit. Yeah, that it does break my heart. I'll tell you what, right? When my when my dad died, I was I ended up living in my missus I lost all my money, lost my house. I had still had an Audi T T. So it was me, my, yeah, me, me and my missus in an Audi TT with a Beagle, our dog, drive all the way to Manchester and I stayed in my, my missus in Manchester, my missus parents spare room for like a month just crying and sorting my shit out uh and we had nothing no money minus money no house nothing and now i've just built a which he'll never see which which hurts me Mm. i just built a 1.5 million pound house which I, I know you shouldn't talk about money and no, stuff like that. No, but listen, you came but, from nothing but, again. But I'm like, when you lose fucking everything yeah. and you look, it's like six years. But the only, they're, they're my like gold badges for working so hard. The house, mm-hmm. right? We've got a villa. Um, but more importantly, the biggest thing that breaks my heart is, yeah, he's, he's never met my two girls, do you know what I mean? But Yeah. It's sad that my dad passed away a week before my daughter was born as well. But again, you feel as if mm. they exchange lives. It feels as if like, a oh part my God, of them goes into them, doesn't it? Don't. Yeah, well, my dad died and then my missus said I'm pregnant. And mm. I've done a joke about this before, which backfired. Well, it ain't like me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, said, I, said, I said, I really feel like my dad had a hand in getting my missus pregnant. But I didn't mean it like that. Shagging on yeah, spiller. Yeah. <laughs> But I do feel like it was my dad's last yeah. gift by saying, "Fucking grow up, man, yeah. grow up." Because uh-huh. that, because if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for my kids, if it wasn't, especially Neve, my first kid, if it wasn't, mm-hmm. I'd still probably be out doing all that and drinking and trying to. Everything it happens in. for a reason. Maybe yeah. all the shit that you went through, try to retaliate, has brought you down a peg or two. A hundred percent. To make you appreciate life, 100%. the finer things in life, and, and including yeah. your missus who stood by you through thick yeah. and thin, through going on the booze and the gear and fucking yeah. up. Yeah. Because what happens is your ego's been dented as well. Yeah. Being this character, I fucking loved by the yeah. nation to then, oh, wait a minute, is he really this bad guy? Or oh, is he pro-rape? Yeah. And you thought, fuck Mad. me, man, what am I going to do? Yeah. And then when you realise, you know what? People's opinion don't, don't mean fuck, him, fuck all. Yeah, like this morning, I got, I, I, this morning someone tweeted, and a lot of Scottish people fucking love getting mouthy online, but yeah. the good thing is you can't understand fucking what they're <laughs> writing. But it was a Scottish guy this morning, actually, mm-hmm. and he was like, oh, here he is. You're back again, didn't you? Last time I saw you on Twitter, I mean, I've been on Twitter for fucking ages, but it's just someone, one of his friends must have shared it. Mm-hmm. And he was like, last time I saw you, you were doing a load of rape jokes and apologising. And then his next tweet was saying, Kel's next, you know, if you don't reply, you keep getting more tweets. And I do see him. And his next one was like, who's gagging for a rape now then? And part of me dies inside because I'm like, do you know what? If I saw you in the street, I'd fucking yeah. headbutt you. Mm-hmm. I really would. If someone come up and said that to me, I would just fucking smash their face in because mm-hmm. it really, like, uh, imagine the worst thing that ever happened to you if I brought it up. Like, you just wouldn't do it to someone yeah. in the pub. Mm-hmm. But on Twitter, they can do it. And now I have to go like this for my own mental health. I have to just go block. So, so before, I can, before I can even reply. But what it does do when that happens is it reminds me don't get too big for your boots. Yeah. You're not you're mm-hmm. not famous. You you haven't made it. You're still working. Be careful. Concentrate on the kids because it would only take something else for me to But that's something for you to still keep working yeah. on. I don't know if that comes back from schooling where you maybe couldn't read or write with dyslexic yeah. that you feel as if you're not good enough. Yeah. Don't let people bully you yeah. to being you, a comedian and, and standing outside the box and doing what you do. Yeah. You grew your following by being Funny, daft. Yeah, yeah. People say, oh, he's talking about sex. All we do is talk about shagging, yeah, yeah, drugs yeah. and alcohol. But yeah, a comedian does it now. It's thrown upon. I don't know if we're getting censored to shut the fuck up. Well, but we know. can't see certain things and say certain things. Yeah. The world's changing. Yeah. I think you should just stay true to you. Oh, well, I'm fuck with the outside yeah, noise I will, does. I don't give a fuck now. Like, yeah. I'll say what I want to say. It can't I mean, be difficult. Do you feel as if you're walking on eggshells yeah. now, though, thing, to yeah. say certain things? But the thing is, like... I don't give a fuck if people are offended and I have my own I have my own box that I work in like mm-hmm. 
doing disabled jokes, for for instance, on, on kids that are disabled. For me, that's not my bag. I just, I wouldn't, I don't, I, you know, I don't care if someone else does. You know what I mean? I might even laugh at some of them, but that's not my thing. Racism and stuff like that, that's not my thing. You know what I mean? If some other people want to do it, I'm not going to tell you not to do it, but I don't think it's the right thing to do. But my thing might be drugs, sex, mm -hmm. you know, like blah, blah, whatever. So when people say to me, you know, like I've done interviews before where I was, I was, I was on Channel 4 before and a guy was like, so I was, I've seen a video of you where you're, I do this sketch where it's the first time, you, you know, you've ever, actually it was in my stand-up. And I was just trying to fucking connect with people. Like, can you remember the first time you ever fingered a bird, how amazing it was? Mm -hmm. And it was. You know what it I mean? Was pretty damn yeah, good. it was fucking amazing. <laughs> you got to remember, like. But the thing is, what a lot of people, like women and other people, and that they want to don't take away, don't ban banter, don't take away lad stuff. Like yeah. this was me fucking growing up, and I can remember I do the story where I'm sort of saying, you know, because you know you were only young, so you'd have to go and knock around the house, and you knock on the door, and the dad would answer and be like, "Hello, Mrs. Jones. Hello, Mr. Jones. Mm. I'm just going up to." see Amy and they go, all right, leave the door open. You know, no funny business. You go up, you're watching a film and you're like, bash, you don't know what you're doing. It's like starting up an old car, whatever you're like, fucking whatever. <laughs> and the joke, the joke just finishes where you come downstairs and you go, goodbye, Mr. Jones, mm -hmm. goodbye, Mr. Jones. There's no harm in it. Mm -hmm. and, and when I'm on stage, I'm like, you shut the door and what's the first thing you do? Every time, when you was a kid, right? Right? You do. It's true. Like, I don't give a fuck. Boys did. When they, and then you, you, wouldn't use that, you wouldn't use that hand. You wouldn't use that hand. You'd go to Tesco's, buy a sandwich. You'd use the other hand. You'd save it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'll finish the joke by saying I'm having dinner, you know, going like that, going. <laughs> you laughed yourself, like mm -hmm. walking home. <laughs> uh -huh. Remembering. Mm -hmm. And then I was at the dinner table and I finished the joke by going, my dad was helping me and I was just like reminiscing and I was like, <laughs> my dad looked at me and went, <laughs> like he knew as well. Uh -huh. So it's like a silly mm -hmm. joke and I got in so much shit about it. I ended up on the fucking news, right? And this guy was going, yeah, so you're degrading women, blah, 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 blah. sexualizing women. So I said to this guy, like, are you straight? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, how old are you? And he was like, this was the presenter. And he's like, I'm 32. And I was like, you ever watch porn? And he's like, huh? On channel live, yeah, channel four news. Shut goes, yourself. I go, you ever watch porn? He yeah. goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, so, so then he goes, so yeah. you can hear the producers going to him, like cut the interview. So I'm just like, cutting the interview. I go, there you go. At least yeah. I'm honest. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then cut, they go, thank you very much. That was Dapper last. Mm -hmm. Can't even admit that he's fucking but had a bash. Who's to tell you what co comedians should say? Yeah, you don't go to their job. If you don't like a comedian, don't yeah. fucking go. There's certain comedians yeah. I think, yeah. he's a wanker. There's other comedians I think, he's funny as fuck. Yeah. Who, it's, it's comedy, as a craft, it's yeah. an art. Yes, people say things that are a bit out of the box. And you go, Ugh. I've got quite a dark humour as well. Somebody will probably watch this interview in three fucking years time, five years time, my career's Brian says, yeah. oh look, that cunt's laughing at that, yeah. boom. Yeah. Yeah. But I ain't gonna fucking react. No. I know who I am or as a person. Mm. I know what I do, I know what I can achieve. Well, the key to it is, is something, something that, what's his name? said to me when I was in Big Brother um, John Barnes alright John, Bar John Barnes is like the most Big Brother was mental right um, and John Barnes is like this guru he's like this philosophical guru mate you don't even want to start talking to him about <sighs> racial divides or whatever the guy you can sit and listen to John Barnes for hours and he said he just said to me listen it's as simple as this is there any malice in what you're saying all right, so if I tell a joke about fingering a bird, where's the malice? Where's the malice? What am I doing going, uh, doing the punchline? <laughs> now I'm going to finger you all. I'm not like, there's no malice. Mm -hmm. Where's the threat? Mm -hmm. It's just a funny. Now, if someone does a joke and there's malice in it, then fine, be offended. So what I found really difficult was getting a lot of flack from what journalists were writing is I felt like saying to the British public, since when do you take your advice on stand-up comedy from a fucking... Virgin. Journalist had yeah. a virgin. Yeah. <laughs> so again, but I don't feel as if you need to justify yourself, I brother. I feel as if you need to. I don't want you on here and just sticking to the same thing. You, yeah. You're a fucking comedian. You've had yeah. a very successful life. It's only going to be for success, even more successful. You have your ups and downs. Yeah. That's what the beauty is, brother. It's funny. So it? That's what the beauty yeah. is. It's a fucking roller yeah. coaster. And I'm very much. I love saying. I love saying this as well. When I on my stories mm -hmm. on my Instagram, jump on my Instagram. That was Instagram. I love saying on there like, if you're going through sank right now, if you've just fucked up bad, if sank really bad is happening to you, fantastic, great, wicked. 
that's the best place to be right now because that means you've got fucking motivation to sort your shit out. A worse position is nothing fucking up in your life and you just fucking plodding along, mm -hmm. unhappy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes it takes a big fuck up for you to go, mm -hmm. I need to do better. I need to be a better person. I need to do better. I need to work harder. I need to appreciate what I've got. Yeah. I mean? It's about showing gratitude to what you've yeah. got as well. If you've got 100%. amazing kids and a, a amazing misses, then yeah. it's to be a bit more humble and realise, you know what, all the other stuff don't really mean fuck all. Yeah. What is a career? What is the money yeah. and all the numbers? Obviously, we crave it. But you've I, got to be careful what you wish for because yeah. you might end up with a TV show one day. Yeah, and then fucked off at the side manager leaving me. Yeah. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> sitting there, he's just turned on to be like dapper too. You sitting, there, I mean? sitting on the yeah. cup drinking a bottle of fucking Jack Daniels. Yeah. Big bag of gear. <laughs> fucking send it on. That's yeah, the life yeah. I want. <laughs> right next to me. I'll be like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. It must have been, I can clearly, we've been speaking for the last few weeks. You're clearly an intelligent man. You're a very good guy as mm. well. I feel as if that's why you probably need to justify yourself so much because yeah. you wanted, oh, it wasn't as bad, but I feel as if it made things worse. Yeah, yeah. I should never have I mean. apologised. Yeah, I mean, you know, like when you see Ricky Gervais and, and other people, you know, a lot a lot of big com a lot of big comedians commented on my situation and said the worst thing I ever did was apologise. But at the time I was, I'd lost everything and I was terrified and, and I was like, how can I, how can I keep this life? What can I do? I wasn't a seasoned, famous comedian yeah. I was a social media star that had a taste of TV and fucking suddenly the whole world was against me did your social media numbers drop as well nah nah once I come off news night they fucking grew. did you get do you get briefed or anything before news night nah mate nah. that was a heavy fucking hatchet job yeah, I man I don't know why I did that yeah. fuck because you look fucked as well yeah I'd been on a few all nighters before yeah, that. do you know what I mean it was just nerve shattered what it was was kind of like how can I make this stop you know, because yeah. it was like it was turn it was turning into two weeks. It was like two weeks of journalists outside my house, you know, and I was fucking doing whatever I was doing in the flat because of what was going on. And outside the window, there was there was fucking journalists, and I was like, "What is going on?" I couldn't even I couldn't walk out. And then it was news article. You know, I was turning on the fucking TV. I remember turning on the TV, and they were having a debate on Channel Four News. Like, a, like they had two hundred people in the fucking audience. Mm -hmm. They had a comedian and a feminist. And I was off me tits, just turned the TV on to watch the TV and they got 200 people. And this person's going, so Dapper laughs, offensive or funny? And the comedian was meant to be <laughs> defending me. The comedian's like, well, he ain't funny, but he's not offensive. And then, the, the, then they were going through all my jokes and everything. I can remember sitting there going, what the fuck? And then looking out the window as well. And there was journalists outside and I was like, I was only having a fucking laugh. Did that make you question all your material? It made me feel like I'd done something really wrong. So that's when I said, how can I stop it all? And they said, well, they want you, Newsnight want you. It's the biggest platform, the biggest political platform in the fucking country. Is it if, seven million? Yeah, it's huge. If you go on there and apologise, then that kind of puts a fork in it and it's done. And I just, I didn't want to walk down Tesco's and see someone around the fucking aisle taking a picture and shouting stuff, trying to get a reaction out of me. Mm -hmm. I just had enough of it, do you know what I mean? And my mum, and my mum, you know, she... She was getting shit at work. Everyone, everyone associated with me was getting. They went to my stepmom's bank. They was in there with the cameras, and you know it was affecting everyone. Yeah. So that's a sense of bullying. How the fuck can they go on about people's making jokes or doing this? But they're they're bullying families. That is mental torture, mate. They 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 turned up at my sister's school, to which she was picking up the kids, and then the school said had said something to her about, you know, who is this guy and is it a threat? And it was, it was crazy. But then you got someone like. They do the same thing to Caroline Flack and she commits suicide. Mm -hmm. And then all the papers are going, oh, it's making me fucking a bit emotional now, sorry, mate. That's but all the, all, the pa all the papers and that are going because she, she actually messaged me, but like, you know what I mean? And uh, all the papers, after whatever happened, all the papers are like, be kind, be nice. Do you know what I mean? They've yeah. got to be, something needs to change, really. Yeah, they they put a lot of pressure on that young girl as well man before yeah. court cases and all the bullshit they destroying life something needs to put pressure on well, you shouldn't be allowed to yeah. you, sh you shouldn't be allowed to write stuff that, that were you suicidal yourself yeah man i called yeah i called the i called the samaritans when when i uh when i buried my dad and i broke up my missus i went and moved in with my mate and uh i um i was i was on the gear and i was i was just yeah not great and I can remember I was sitting in and he had white carpet and I can remember thinking to myself oh I fucking had enough of this do you know what I mean like so I didn't want to talk to my mum 
because I didn't want to worry my mum and also I didn't want my mum to know about the drugs. You know, she knows now, but... And I, I couldn't speak to Shelley and I didn't want to speak to my mates because I was kind of selling it to my mates like, woo, I'm free, I ain't got a bird and, you know, I'm having fun. So I was lying, do you know what I mean? Partner. Yeah, and I can remember thinking to myself, you know, I ain't got no pills. If I cut my wrists, I'm going to fuck up the white carpet. He had new white carpet. And then I thought to myself, what am I fucking doing? Because I was on the gear. So I, I, I rang the Samaritans and I spoke to a woman for about 45 minutes. And I was talking about this with my counsellor recently. I was speaking to her for about 45 minutes. And I can remember coming off the phone and going, wow, like, you know, this, this, this it can't get much lower than this. This is it, you know. So, and it was actually like, cool. I'm glad that happened to me. But so many people don't make it past that, obviously, that so many people don't pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. Like in, in that moment, so many people will just kill themselves, especially if you're high on drugs. And the fact that I spoke to her and she sort of said like, you do realize that everyone else in your life is like secretly worrying about you. And you know, you're, you just lost your father, you're doing drugs. This is why you feel like this. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to get your life back on track and you'll feel better. And then I spoke to my mum about everything and then got back with my bird and, and, and pulled myself out of it. That's why I talk about suicide and, and mental health because when you mix bad times with a lot of drugs, yeah. you don't take a lot to top yourself, yeah, I don't, don't think. don't take a lot to push over the edge. No. I believe we're all, I say it every podcast, we're all struggling at some point yeah. in my life. Well, we don't know what the fuck we're doing in life. No. We're just winging it. We're, yeah, we're just, yeah. We just don't know yeah. what the fuck but we're supposed what, to that's do. That's what you do need. You, you need a tiny bit of structure. And to me, yeah. my structure is that little run in the morning and making sure that on the Wednesdays I do my daughter's mm -hmm. swimming lessons. Every morning I do them breakfast. Just those little key things just keep so me. So that's all from that yeah. joke on stage that a girl shouted that out yeah. and you've retaliated. Yeah. And, yeah. and my dad died. Your whole life just went Yeah, um, Yeah. But um, it's in life, it's not about the obstacles, it's about how you react. Mm. So this will make you a stronger character to wait, go, wait a minute, do you know what? It's only fucking words. Oh yeah, I've got my, I'm glad now because... But imagine if that happened to me now when yeah. I had my kids mm -hmm. and I let myself spiral out of control. Has people been using your kids, your daughters about it? What, is well, it yeah. everything well, using yeah. all that shit yeah. against you? Yeah. Oh yeah, online, online constantly. Because it was rape based and mm -hmm. I had two girls. Yeah. Yeah, but... You can understand all this. What they're doing. Yeah. I get it, I do yeah. get it, but you are a comedian. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You are yeah. a comedian, you, you make yeah, but, jokes and people yeah, well, laugh like, and everybody was laughing at... At the gig. At the gig. Did you have support from top yeah. comedians? Were they yeah. showing you no, support? No, not really. Not Nobody really. Nobody came out and gave you back No, in. not really, no. Because I was social media. A lot of, I a think... A lot of jealousy towards you? Definitely. A lot of, I think, there's a lot of people that are in line for TV shows, maybe with ITV2 or, you know, there's a lot of massive comedians out there that were doing big things that didn't have TV shows. And there's me that come up through social media and then I'm signed and I've got a TV show. So it was like, he's misogynistic. He's, he's hate speech. But... Fuck them. Fuck it. Yeah. Do you know what They're I mean? And fuck them now hands. Yeah, as well. fuck them, man. Yeah. Listen, it's always going to come with you. You're yeah. going to get your trolls, but if you've yeah. got a million, two million followers and you've got fucking 95% positive, yeah. then I The way that I see that. it now is the most important thing to me is like, I know I'm funny, right? Because I crack yeah. myself up. I crack, <laughs> I crack myself up, right? Get me on my Instagram. That was Instagram. Check out my podcast, right? But yeah. I know I'm funny because I still make myself laugh, mm -hmm. right? So if I can continue blagging a little bit of a living doing that while working on being a good dad, then fuck it. Brother, We're all right. you've got two amazing kids, yeah. you've got a message, you've got a fucking, nearly a two million pound gaff. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Fuck's yeah. sake, trust me, yeah. mate, you're all right. Big jokes, yeah, see? Dick jokes, pussy jokes. <laughs> Listen, you're all right. Yeah. You're good. You're just trying to get to the heights, the fast that you got to yeah. when you just started. Yeah. Yeah. That'll come, but yeah. even if it doesn't, yeah. who fucking cares? Yeah, but you know what? I'm, 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 not, I'm not ashamed to say like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm writing films and making films, low budget films. Yeah. And I've got other people in the film industry, close friends of mine, well, they're not friends of mine anymore because of this, going, ah, oh, look at you making low budget films and blah, blah. I'm like, well, do you know what? Everyone starts somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Just because of what happened in the past, I'm not ashamed to, you know, to write and to try and raise money and to try and do things. You know, I'm not, I don't want to pretend to be a star. What do you mean? People are slagging you off because... You know, yeah, I mean, you know, the film industry is a really fickle thing. Either people think like we're either you're either making you either make massive movies like Jurassic Park, yeah, mm -hmm. or just fuck off. You're not mm -hmm. part of it. So when you start making low budget films and, and trying to act 
And trying to, people are like, ah, <laughs> that yeah. film's shit. It didn't do anything. Well, I don't care. Because you know what? Maybe my 10th one will. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But you're trying. The yeah. more you chop the door, the, eventually it will open. That's it. Do you know what I mean? I always yeah. say it again. I always repeat myself, but 99% of success is failure. Mm. The fact that you've came from drug abuse, yeah. suicidal thoughts, losing your dad, yeah. not knowing what the fuck to do. You say losing your career, but you never really... No. That's just in your mind that you thought you'd yeah, lose your yeah. career. You lose the fucking gig on the ITV. You get bigger numbers of them, you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Stop oh, it. Oh, you know I mean? You're making me want to go on a sesh. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Your, yeah. your perception change the way you look at things and the things you look at change yeah. you're looking yeah. at sometimes different what's your background can I ask you yeah of course addiction issues mate I've lost really? a lot of friends and family members to murder suicide overdose really been in prison have you uh, for what had two girls pregnant at the same time crashed out the police car chase um, fucking hell mate yeah so I, I, I've come yeah. I've been to hell not just once but many occasions yeah I'm like you want to react and I'll get trolls yeah very seldom I react. I'll, I'll fire yeah. back one shot and yeah. just fucking fuck them up. Yeah, but I think I think that from the from the podcast that I've watched, I think that the I think that the reason why you've got quite a cool fan base and you know that I, I kept seeing my name being tagged in it is because you're not going you're not going for the normal people that everyone would go for to interview. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You're not like who's current, who's mm -hmm. who's. You know, yeah, I don't a, need to. Yeah. You're going for interesting stories. Because everybody's, interesting everybody's stories. struggling. Yeah. And we're all fucking struggling. It's not like an underdog's podcast, but I'm very good at opening people up. I'm very good yeah. at connecting with people. Now, you're a funny guy. Your videos are always funny. Yeah, but yeah you've, made, actually, me yeah, break you've all, made me talk about a lot of stuff yeah, I haven't for a long I time. I break all yeah. that shit down and where you can relax. So if you've come in, you're quite fidgety, you're yeah. a bit nervous because... I ain't a fucking journalist. Yeah, yeah. Every guest that I go on, if anybody speaks to any guest, if you speak to any of my guests, they'll speak very highly of me. I don't fuck anybody over. They come yeah. on, tell their story. What yeah. you see in social media yeah. is, is what you see in the press ain't really the person. No. So if I can break it down and connect, build a rapport, then there's trust there. Yeah. We can see that we're all struggling. We can yeah. drop the, the charade and just be yourself. I think people connect because they understand, you know what, we're all fucked up. I see him all the time. I used to watch all his videos. He's fucking class. I never knew he had suicidal thoughts. Yeah. I never knew he had drug addiction. I've seen every fucking person I know has battered gear in their life at some point. Yeah. Do you know what I, I mean? Yeah. It's scary. I, I think that's why I'm quite open about talking. I can remember back in the day that when I, when I was with one management company, they was like, and rightly so, brand, brands don't want to be associated with you if you're associated with drugs. So now that I'm self-sufficient with my money, I make my money through business, not not necessarily through my social media and mm -hmm. like, like good investments and stuff like that, that I don't rely on commercial, commercial deals to pay me. So if I want to go on my Instagram and I want to say, you know, I've been getting on it too much, so I need to sort my shit out. Who wants to do it with me? Mm -hmm. mate you should see my inbox it's fucking mental yeah. my, my, my following is pure lads mm -hmm. and they're like oh, mate I want to stop like it's every Monday Tuesday I'm fucked like I'm yeah. arguing with my bird so the more more I spoke about it the better it was but I don't want to be labelled as a druggie no. that's the risk that's what people yeah. think if you've got you know? millions of people following you and if you're portraying it as being cool and yeah. people think it all right yeah. so You've and I've done a lot of drugs about. I've done a lot of drugs. I've done a lot of jokes. I've, I, no, I've done a lot of jokes about drugs. Yeah. You know, I, I used to do a character called the uh, Sesh Gremlin, mm -hmm. where it'd be like it's Friday, yeah. and I play two characters where my missus would go, "Morning, it's Friday," and, then, and it'd be like I'd, I'd it'd go into my head, and it'd be like a gremlin going, yeah. and I end up pouring sugar on her tits and trying to do it, and that in the bed, she's slapping <laughs> me and all this, and. Uh, a lot of people were like, you shouldn't do jokes about drugs, you know, come up with it. I'm like, the Sesh Gremlin is real for me, man. That's a real thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, when it yeah. comes to first day Friday mm -hmm. and people were like, what, what you, do you want to do tonight? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I've got to consciously go, yeah. I've got to pick up, I've got to take my kids to school yeah. on, on tomorrow morning. Yeah. I'm not coming out. Mm -hmm. Listen, the video, I always remember you, you done a video, I don't know if you were sitting in a pub saying that you come out for one beer. Every, and it every went, last yeah, 90 and seconds. It it's not yeah. the, the, the extremes yeah. that you go, but this is normal. I know yeah. people saying you're creepy cunts, but... No, no they, but they, listen, I was, just, when I wrote that video, I was on a come down. So I wrote that, I wrote that video, I was like, all I did want, I made a list of every fucking most <laughs> debauchery thing. And it was,
was like, what do you, what, you know, what do you do on a night out? First of all, you say you're going to have a couple of beers and a couple of beers turns into a few tequilas, mm-hmm. which turns into someone saying, get the packet, which turns into you talking to the bouncer about fights you've never had, mm-hmm. which I love doing. Yeah. Well, when I was in year eight, I smacked this geezer with a plimps up. Never happened. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Then you go to a strip club, you get a boner, so you go home to get a hooker, you do the Viagra, the hooker, <laughs> the hooker leaves, then you get a boner, you end up ripping it off to midget amp, you teep on, wake up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in the morning, yeah. no hanging out your nose, friction burns around your core, Fuck it, I'm staying in. Yeah. But that video was probably the most viral video that I've ever done. And do you know what that tells me? There's a lot of people out there that do exactly yeah. the same fucking thing. Yeah. We're all fucking deluded as well. Yeah. We're all listen, we're all crackers, we're all bonkers. Yeah. I believe everybody's got greatness in them also. Yeah, of course. Obviously, with your following, if you can make strives to you say yeah. you lost it all, but then come back fighting, yeah. shows courage. So if you can do videos, you know what, clean and sober and changing your mental status mm. and going out running every day, people can get inspiration from that. Yeah. My platform is growing. I'm taking over the podcast game. I I'll be it. the biggest by the end of the year. It's no, no joke love about that. it. Already, I believe I'm number one. There's nobody can stop me. No words from the outside. No what about the press say. My following know me. I'm trying to be as real as I can get. I've still got an agenda. I still want to yeah. be successful. Yeah. As a wee bit there, it craves fame as well, yeah. possibly. Of a bit of yeah, attention. Why, why not? Yeah, well, but, you're getting a bit of it now. So. Yeah, but it don't mean fuck yeah. all. I need to what be you've, all you've got to do is you all you've got to do is throughout your journey is you've got to remember why people tuned in and people tuned in because of the realness yeah so just mm-hmm. never t- and and this is partly what got me in trouble is when ITV2 told me to when they went through my stand up and they tried to censor some of it and I said no I said stuff that they didn't want me to say is if you ever get big opportunities just make sure that you clarify that you know you won't you won't censor what you originally so come you were up getting with. watered down yeah, a lot, a lot. And I never what did. What was the views on your ITV? About 300,000 a night. Fuck all, man, yeah, you can do that. What do you yeah, get, but, what do you get but, Snapchat over a million cup. a day? Fuck it, I was getting a million, I'd get a million views on Snapchat having a shit. So was it good money though? Uh, probably about 30 grand I got for my first series. Not That's a lot. fuck all, Not man. Not a lot, no. And, but the thing is, there comes a notoriety about being on TV. I'm on TV now. I'm on TV, you become brand friendly. You're part of a gang. You're, I'm on TV. I made it. I'm on TV. That's what I thought. That's what I always thought. I always nah, want to be. See, Do you know where I want to be? Netflix. That's where you want to yeah. be. Not TV. So you want to get more documentaries and shit? Yeah, out yeah. Films. I've got a film and a pilot next week. I've written a whole drama series. I've written films mm-hmm. and I'm raising money and I just want to get my face on Netflix. But you're still chipping away. You're still hustling, grinding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And You've got to throw beautiful. loads of shit at the wall for saying to stick, and you? Yeah, exactly, man. And it's good that you're, you're bang on it again. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you're there. You're I'm already there. You've never really went anywhere. Yeah. You've just, if I'm honest, it just seems as if you were in a depression. You yeah. couldn't handle it well. I was, yeah. You, I, yeah. You, you just jumped on something that somebody had said to you in the media and you've fucking been so depressed and lonely you needed to go yeah. against Away. the grain and yeah. instead of just taking a couple of steps back, staying off the booze, the gear, yeah. going, wait a minute. Yeah. I ain't fucking lost my career. You've lost it yourself. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. did because the way you reacted. Yeah, yeah, Not definitely. the press, not the haters. Yeah, definitely. You lost it. Yeah. And you haven't even fucking lost it because you still gained but I more think, followers. I think that that's the weird thing, you know, but when people come out of Love Island, they go on Love Island, they come out of Love Island, they got a million followers. They suddenly think- They've made that. They've made it, right? But then when they, when they deal with, you know, when they get caught sniffing a line or shagging someone's bird or, or saying something racist and the, and the whole world is against them. No, I don't want to be famous, no. They don't want to be famous, no. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. I didn't want this life. And it's like, who's to blame here? Do you know what I mean? And what it is, is the media, are, 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 can, the media kill people, 100%. And we, we've seen of it. Of course. We've seen people from Love Island. It's notorious. I'm not, there's other names I'm not even going to name. There's other people I know. The media kill people. So unless you're prepared to take that flack, just you shouldn't be in the industry. And what I've realised now is just, you know, la, 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 la. Yeah. Just singing. Look at your baby. Yeah. I look at my babies and I'm yeah. like, do mm-hmm. you know what? I am a bit of a twat. So they're going to call me a twat. So just yeah, accept that, innit? Yeah, have it. You yeah. Do, as soon as you retaliate, where will you give your energy to? They steal your energy. Yeah. So rise above it I know it's difficult what about the big brother how was that experience for you big brother is mental mate why did you do that well they offered they offered me big brother as soon as my dad died and I was like they just want they want car crashes on TV (laughs) and I was like you must have been perfect then at that moment yeah Yeah, I'd just been thrown off TV you know my dad had died I was online going mental so they offered it but you know someone close to me said don't be fucking stupid you know and they offered me about 40 grand originally. Mm-hmm. And I was like, nah. So I managed to turn it down. A year later, it was a bit more. And in the third year, it was a year of the woman. 
So they were celebrating the year of the woman and they wanted a villain. So they come back and offered me a lot of money. But I just started getting my head straight and my other businesses had just started picking up. And, you know, it was it was like, do I, don't I? You know, is this just going to bring everything back? Am I going to fuck up again? And I can't handle the press and there's a lot of press with it. Um, they kept offering more money and in the end I said, yeah. And uh, it was fucking insane. I actually managed to come out of it with good press. I mean, I said some fucked up stuff, got in trouble yeah, in it. Yeah, fucked up guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But it actually, I think what it actually done was, instead of people, instead of what the na- what the press had made the nation think that I was like pro-rate, misogynistic, you know, this arsehole, I think that by the end of watching me in Big Brother, they worked out that I was just a twat. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's just a twat. He's not mm-hmm. like a fucking woman-hating rapist. Mm-hmm. He's just a twat. And... But there was some funny shit happening. It's mad. Like you can't, you know, you don't know what the time is in there, right? So it's yeah. silent. You don't know what the time is. Mm-hmm. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to stimulate yourself at all. So you can't listen to music. You can't <clears throat> chew chewing gum. You can't read. You can't have anything to entertain yourself. So you have to sit like this with sixteen other people with fucking egos like yours. <laughs> right? So everyone wants to be the centre of attention. And the biggest thing is you can't wank, yeah. right? So I would not know stop me. <laughs> well, but it didn't stop me actually. <laughs> it didn't stop me. But you have to fucking because the last thing you want is day thirty-five. Mm-hmm. That the last was in the toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, mm-hmm. So you had to you had to work out ways of of doing it. How did you do it? Well, what it was, <laughs> you weren't well, standing over John it. Barnes's bed, were no. you? <laughs> Get shot out there. Oh, fucking love Liverpool. No. But um. No, what it was, was uh, they had, when you go in the toilets, there weren't even locks on the toilet. So mm-hmm. a lot of people actually got constipated because no one wanted to go for a shit because there's no locks on the toilet. So you've got 16 people in the house. There's mm-hmm. only a few toilets. And when you go in, you're like, is someone going to walk? So imagine, you know, wiping your ass and that. So yeah. it took you a long time to have a shit, let alone a wank. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I can remember there was, <laughs> they had this, uh, they have like a, a, a microphone I uh-huh. had no cameras in the toilets, but a microphone hangs down to about eye level mm-hmm. right there. So, you know, whatever you're doing, they can fucking hear it. And you know there's a camera on the door because what happens when you go in Big Brother is there's like two or three people behind the scenes that are assigned to just specifically film you 24 hours a day. Yeah, I met one of them on a tube once. He goes, fuck me, mate. I filmed you for like nearly four weeks, mm-hmm. mate, solidly. He goes, you fucking love picking your nose, So they thought, So you know, there's constantly, you know, sometimes you can hear them through the wall. It's like, yeah. <coughs> Yeah, and you remember, you. yeah, yeah, or you're saying something stupid in the camera because they have a cut of CCTV cameras. Someone will go, What's your honest opinion on the LGBT community? and you hear a camera go, and You're like, I love them all, yeah, like, yeah. you've got to be really careful, be cautious, yeah. And people try and cause beef to get airtime, yeah. So they try and draw them questions out of you, but having a wank, someone else, Courtney, that won it, she actually come out. Well, it's a she, he, he's a, he dresses up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Shane. Mm-hmm. He, he, yeah. And I didn't even know because he, he come in as Courtney and when I woke up, I was like, where's that blonde bird, mate? Oh, the fuck that? Mm-hmm. And she was like, over here. And I was like, <laughs> we, be, we become fucking great yeah. mates. And he come in and he was like, you know, because you have to talk in code, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to sort of insinuate what you mean so they can't pick up on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, so he was like, you know, if you want to, you know, relieve some tension. And I'm like, yeah, I know what you're fucking talking about. He goes, you just got to turn the taps on. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, turn the taps on. And I was like, oh, the microphone, the noise, the taps, bosh. I get it. He goes, watch. So he went in and he went in and he turned the taps on. And I, I was like, oh, he's having a bad day. He's having a bad <laughs> And then he come out, right? But listen, they, uh, we all had duties. We had different duties. And two girls, Ashley and Jess, their duties was like my duty was something else everyone like someone was doing the food someone had to do the garden someone had to do the cleaning the bathroom cleaning and Jess and Ashley went into the bathroom afterwards and they come out and they was like can everyone come to the lounge please I'll never forget it they pulled everyone into the lounge we're on fucking national TV and they pulled us over they come out and they went someone's had a wank in there we can smell the spunk oh yeah and I was like what sort of girl can smell spunk? <laughs> oh, no. Someone who, who's tasted yeah, a lot. I don't know, right? So, but I know that Shane's been in there, and so I went, <laughs> and everyone looked at me, and I was like, 
No, he had a bash like it weren't uh -huh. me. And Shane was like, I looked across, Shane was like, that's disgusting. I went, oh, <laughs> mate. So, uh -huh. but anyway, so they already thought it was me. So I thought, fuck it, I'm going to do it. So uh -huh. I waited a couple of days later and I went into the, there's another bathroom where they've got, <laughs> I can't believe I'm telling you this, fuck it. <laughs> there's another bathroom where they've got, they've got Johnny's in there, yeah? So it, like in the, in the outside bathroom and I thought to myself, you know, they ain't going to be able to smell spunk if mm -hmm. I have a posh wank. So mm -hmm. I went into, into there, right? <laughs> yeah. And I had this hoodie on, right? And I went in there. So I turned the tats on. Shh, got, the, got a Johnny. Because you don't know what it's like, like two weeks in without having a wank. You the start dog looking, see you taking the Johnny like, off. Like, and and Whitaker was in there. I started looking at her like, oh, fuck <laughs> it. Oh. So I needed to crack one off. Yeah. But so I got a Johnny, you know, ooh, whoop, whoop. and then fucking Anne Whitaker actually come and like was outside. She's like, what's going on? Like knocking on the door. So I mm -hmm. tied the Johnny up and I was like what if I flush it down the toilet and it sticks and, and it sticks so I was mm -hmm. like I need to find a bin but the bin was outside so I put it in that part of my jumper and I opened the door and Anne was like oh it's the toilet free <laughs> so I watched that clip back like no one knows I had uh -huh. a Johnny full of spunk right there <laughs> and I'm like yeah and then I just went like that in the toilet and then but you know what rushes over you mm -hmm. so for the next three days I'm sitting there going what if they they calculated all of that and that is on national TV? Yeah. Like I've gone in there, I've had the Johnny, they've mm -hmm. heard it, they've got it. So the paranoia sets yeah. in for three days going, mate, my missus and my, my yeah. mum and that, and, that <laughs> and I'm in there talking yeah, to Anne Whitaker with a Johnny yeah. from the spunk. Why if they get Johnnies in there? Because they want you to shag, didn't they? Do they? Yeah, of course they do. Dirty cunts. They're mental. Do you know what they do? They have so all it's all right you shag on live telly, but you can't see a fucking joke? Yeah. Do you know what? They do all this mad stuff in there. Like they've got all these ways of really causing problems. So they they mix the old people with the young people, right? Mm -hmm. Purposely. So they'll put like me and whoever was young in with like old people that yeah. want to go to sleep, right? But they won't turn the lights off, like studio lighting in the bedroom till everyone goes to bed. And what they'll do is they plow the young people full of booze. So we'll be out like in a jacuzzi. Yeah. And the old people will be kind of going, we want to go to bed. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? They cause massive arguments or what they'll do is they'll call you up to the diary room and they'll mm -hmm. be like is anyone pissing you off today and you'll be like oh John Barnes is doing my fucking head and he's done this 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 and this mm -hmm. then you'll sit down for dinner and it go this is big brother we just want to play a clip and then boom it'll be you going John Barnes is a fucking dinner and he's there yeah. it's like it's a fucker it just survive. shows you what they do though to, to create entertainment yeah. it's fucking sick as well it's, it's a bit psychotic there the producer behind yeah. that to, to do that shit so when your career started when you say you've went fucked and then you started picking up the pace again yeah. when did you start feeling good about yourself when did you start realising okay I'm getting out of it when it's I come out when I come out of Big Brother and and and, and, I, and I didn't come I didn't come like, I come out to cheers do you know what I mean so one of the hard things was I went in as a villain so when I went in I got booed really mm -hmm. you know because it was the year of the getting woman booed yeah it was like there were some people like how were you, you feeling walking in getting booed fucking I was pissed out of my head were you steaming it, I was steaming yeah I had to get fucked to walk in it's meant they got you scared yeah, they got helicopters, thousands of people. You walk down, do the interview. And I walked in and I was just like, what am I doing? I'm definitely going to say some fucked up shit. And I did. But when it, I, I kept getting put up for eviction and I couldn't understand why because I was being nice to everyone. And then it comes to like the first, you've done like a week, right, in the house. And the only time you know what's going on on the outside is when they go, housemates. And they they the housemates, we are talking when they're doing a live eviction and mm -hmm. you hear the audience when you're in the house and they go, housemates. And you hear them going, mm -hmm. and you can hear people going, da, 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 and they read your names out. And it was like one week in when they went up for eviction this week, it's so-and-so. And they went, and dapper. And everyone fucking cheered. Like it was a massive cheer. And I just went, oh, I'm doing all right. And then when I went out, on, when I come out, when I come out and I walked down mm -hmm. and everyone fucking cheered and like people were going, you've been great, we love you. And I was like, wow. And then the newspapers were nice. I was like, right, it's over, it's over. And then I just thought, keep, your, keep my head down. I kept my head down for about mm -hmm. six months. I didn't really do anything. Do you feel as if your life though and everything you say is constantly under the microscope? Yeah. Do you think it still is now? No. Good. No, not, Good. Not, I'm not relevant. Give you a bit of breathing space? Yeah, I'm not I, I stopped. What I did was mm -hmm. I didn't feel, I done, I come out and I done loose women. So I went on Seen loose. That as well. Yeah, I went on loose women. I let I let them fucking attack me on loose women, mm -hmm. and some of them did, some of them didn't. But they gave me a, what I wanted to do was show humility. The ones at the right hand side you didn't, no, but no. the ones on the left kind of, yeah. and that's understandable. Yeah. You're going to have. I'm for you, mate. I, yeah. I respect what you're doing, what mm. you've done. You've made some fuck ups, just like myself. Yeah. I'll continue to fuck up, but for what you're doing, mate, it's, thank you. It mate. shows courage, man, to Thanks. come back fighting again because a lot of people, like I say, might come out of Love Island or whatever. And, 
yeah. they'll have their million followers and they think they've made it and then they get fucked some bad story comes out about a bird that writes yeah. three and they can't handle that boom before yeah. you might have talked herself yeah. sad, you were easily sad. going down that fucking that road yeah. because of what was said about you and the fact that you've come back fighting mate a lot of people take inspiration from that and that's Thank why you. I love these podcasts because it shows people in a better light of yeah. you made a fucking mistake do you know what I mean so yeah. when you came out then and started took a break what yeah. was your life like then? Did, was you happy about yeah, taking I mean, a step I, back? Yeah, I needed to make money. I needed to make the money that I'd made. I needed to make the money that I'd made make money. So I invested the money and I created some business and I thought, you know, when all the papers wanted to talk to me mm. then, I thought this is the time not to talk to them. So just let me drift away. So I drifted away for a little while, worked on my social media, invested my money and worked on business. And then when... I felt like mentally I was stable and my business was good. Then I started coming back with projects and trying to get things off the ground and up in my social media stuff. And it's like people, they just left me alone then. Do you know yeah. what I mean? They just leave me alone now. It's like, they're kind of like, right, he's, he's We've crucified them. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, they think they try to fuck you. And you, when they realize you're not going anywhere, it's kind of like, he's like an old piece of furniture now. Just fucking let him be. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But again, it's how you react to things. Yeah, I, I stay away from it now. I stay yeah. away from... And it can be difficult because you like I say, you're a cheeky cunt, so you're going to... Yeah. I say get, stupid shit every yeah. week, but yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. I think that people you are used to you, Can you imagine what if, if we were getting recorded when we spoke to our friends at the weekend? Yeah. We're fucked, we're doing a life yeah. sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. even though that's... Yeah, that's why I don't... That's why ultimately <laughs> I don't feel guilty, you know? That's why I yeah. don't feel guilty because what I put out online ain't nowhere near what my fucking mates say to me. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So... That's why I don't, I, I do think take, to, you know. Did you have to, did you cancel your own show, the UK tour, going through that turmoil? Was it you that cancelled that? Or did it get cancelled? The uh, the venues started dropping. Yeah. The venues got petitioned. What about how your friends and that reacted? Did you still have support or did everybody just disown you? No, you only fuck somebody, people no, back to you. my friends, I think some of my friends were actually quite relieved. Some of my friends were quite relieved that it had stopped because mm -hmm. it was getting crazy so I think some of my friends were like don't worry about it you know fuck it but um, celebrities all everyone, everyone that was up my ass before more or less 90% of them mm -hmm. all either jump ship un literally unfollowing so unfollowing so they can't be seen to support you you know, when they've been fucking... Yeah, I don't agree stuff. with that, man. Nah. You, you there's a couple, there's a, there's you a can understand people with a clean cut yeah. maybe they'll lose certain sponsorship yeah. but for me man if you're yeah. with somebody you yeah. show support there's Obviously. a couple of people that put it like Tamara San I'm good friends with Tamara mm -hmm. uh, he publicly spoke out about how I was being treated yeah not many other that's people that's the people did. you need to stand yeah. by keeping and your circle yeah, for life and my missus stuck with me do you know what I mean yeah she, she met me when I had loads of money and I was mm -hmm. doing well do you feel well. as if you were getting used uh, when you were at when you were creating all these numbers, everybody wanted a wee PCA to create numbers themselves. Yeah, but I mean, I use them as well, you Yeah, know? of course, it's 50-50, yeah, isn't it? I was like, you know, famous people coming to me because I was blowing up and I was like, oh my God, it's famous people. Mm -hmm. So it's a game, you know? You meet some people in this industry where you strike up a genuine friendship, like me and Tamar, me and, like, loads of people. Yeah. But some people you don't, so you, you, you do use each other, you know? Yeah, I don't I don't blame them, I just don't yeah, fuck about them no more. So fucking life, man. You grow up, you got, yeah. you suddenly fame... Fame feels amazing. You know? How old are you now? 36. Oh, can't you? I'm 36. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a horrible part. That's a of bastard, life. mate. Says that. Four away from 40. Uh, yeah, no, it's like you're going to your fucking second half. First half's over, mate. <laughs> I know. But fuck. And the second half's got to be more sensible, isn't it? Yeah, is it? Fuck your dick shrivels, your balls shrivel, man. You just lives all fucking down. I feel like I'm here. a bit of shag now, though. I don't think you'll be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, through all that, mate. Love it that you're fucking back fighting, mate. Thank Fuck you. everybody else. Tell me your plans for the future, brother. Where do you see God. happening? Uh, I'm trying to write films. I'm trying to do acting. What kind of film? Well, uh, I, I had a West End play. I, I've done great reviews. We've done a West End play and we turned that into a film. Raised the money online. So we're filming that at the end of November. I've, I've written uh, like a comedy, comedy drama series. I'm trying to be like Ricky Gervais. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Doing stand-up writing stuff and getting it commissioned after life is un unbelievable yeah, genius brilliant. man that's what I'd like to write and act mm -hmm. and stuff like that so mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to do but if not why not if not the only person that can fail is you yeah exactly so I'm just going to keep writing it and um, just be a good dad and, and try and keep what I've got yeah do you know what I mean like find that. balance yeah find balance keep doing what you're doing like I say Ricky Gervais I believe he's a genius and look what he done in the Hollywood stage was it the Oscars 
He just fucking crucified. Was, fuck, was it the yeah. Oscars? It was he all crucified. paedophile stuff he spoke and he about. he just went fucking... Yeah. He done it in such a way that it was serious... It was truth, yeah, but funny. But do you know what? He's so intelligent. And they and they created publicity for Afterlife. Yeah, but it, yeah, fucking unbelievable yeah. genius. Yeah, and it, people yeah. might go see what yeah. he actually. Oh done. no, he's one of my. I'm not. He's do my you know idol. I mean? Yeah, but he has a great. He has a great ability of talking about things like paedophiles in Hollywood mm-hmm. and being friends with Jeffrey Epstein and sort of, sort of, shining it in a yeah. box where if you complain about this. You know, what's that say about you? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, if you're offended by this, stop touching kids. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's fucking good at the way he does it. Like yeah. it, like in one of his stands up where he talks about Caitlyn Jenner and uh, mm. her, he, him turning into a woman and then, be- and then crashing the car, becoming a bad driver. <laughs> it's so like, it's so close. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. what are you doing? But he says it in a way where mm-hmm. you, you laugh and then like, then he, he but he says, you know what I shouldn't say? I shouldn't say this and I shouldn't talk about this and I'll regret doing this and that. But mm-hmm. while he's actually saying it, he's telling the joke. So yeah. It's genius. Yeah, it's genius. But, but, but again, you're a genius yourself. With some of the stuff, yeah. But Not some of the stuff. You discredit yourself a lot as well. Stop fucking discrediting yeah, yourself. Thanks. Stop saying that, oh, you're not, if I get it on Netflix, why not say I'm going to get it on Netflix? Yeah. Well, I will. I will. Yes. I will. Because I'm telling people I'll be the biggest podcast in the UK and then after that, I'm going worldwide. Visualise it. Yeah. yeah. I, I believe I'm already yeah. there. Yeah, good I man. believe I'm already there. Fuck everybody else. That's it. you got to visualise yeah, it. Yeah, outside noise don't mean shit. It don't well, yours shit. is the only one I keep seeing popping up online. It's because it's blown up, but yeah. I need to stay grounded still. Yeah. Because I'm still a wee bit self-seeking. It's good, isn't it? Getting yeah. a bit of attention, you feel good. Yeah. Getting frisky. As well, long just, as I don't go back nah, just, to old habits. No, nah, just be, yeah. And yeah. just be creative with who you get on and the interesting yeah, stories. Isn't, like I say, you're a, star, but you're a big draw. You're yeah. a big fucking draw. You have on my show because you're going to get people talking. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. Oh, oh I know. Said, yeah. it is what yeah. it is. Yeah. Press might take stuff. It is what yeah. it is. But we'll keep our head above water. Well, I'd love, yeah, I'd love for your your listeners and, and that. Come over to... What is your, all your social media stuff? Yeah, so my Instagram, just come to my Instagram, Dapper's Instagram, that's where yeah. I put everything. But I've got a podcast, Chatting Bollocks. Yep. You can find me, Daniel O'Reilly, Chatting Bollocks. We're doing Chatting Conspiracy Bollocks at the moment. I interviewed uh, a lot of celebs as well before. Mm. I've had a couple of seasons on it. And it's picking up. It's It just gives me uh, a nice space to talk and chat bollocks, basically. That's Therapy what as well. Yeah, that's it's See, that shit oh, talking to you yeah. is fair. Yeah. Is. just sitting talking shit it is it's it just is. therapy it's yeah. just easy there's no agenda there's no bullshit there's no questions yeah. sitting here yeah. we're just talking I like being honest now as well do you know what I mean it's the key to life brother and just, listen there's a, a, to an extent I always say oh, I'm honest but there's 90% there's yeah. shit I'll, I'll die with but yeah. there's stuff that uh, but I'll still be yeah, yeah, I know do you know, know, I know, do you know what I mean bro we yeah. can, I'm like and we met on Twitter, obviously. Yeah. So get me on. T- tell me what you thought about this on Twitter, because mm-hmm. obviously I'm conscious. I want to yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But I think as long as we're conscious of the fact that it, it's good to try and improve who you are, mm. I think that's that's what I'm living by at the moment. Definitely. And for anybody that's struggling, Dan, maybe going through a suicidal thoughts or maybe out in a relationship, yeah. maybe lost a parent. What advice would you give for them? A hundred percent is a hundred. A hundred percent is. Um, and I know it's such a cliche, but you've got to talk to someone, man. And if you haven't got a bottle to talk to anyone around you, ring one of the lines because everything's tangled in your head at the moment. And uh, it, it's so easy to untangle. And also, sometimes I think that when when everything's as bad as it is, it's, uni- it's like the universe's way of checking that you're ready for something good. So if you can just survive this maybe something good is coming next you know what I mean yeah, it yeah. happened for me you yeah know what I mean? listen mate you're still here you're still yeah. grinding you're still hustling I look forward to seeing your journey still funny I, as fuck I, and I generally mean ah, well, uh, <laughs> maybe stick to acting bro nah, um, yeah. no nah, thank, thank you it's for oh that was great man no listen for coming on telling your story I really appreciate it and I wish you all the best for the future for thank you, you and your missus and the kids thank you for God having bless. me mate Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.